and needs to have their appendix removed. What we do is we give intravenous fluids, we give intravenous antibiotics, which treats the infection, and then surgically, we use, and we use laparoscopes now, so we do laparoscopic surgery. We go in and we remove the appendix. It usually requires a one or two day hospitalization, and afterwards you would expect the child to be completely normal. Now, there are situations where the diagnosis isn't so clear. One, one problem can be girls. A 13-year-old girl who's ovulating for the first time may have pain in their right lower quadrant because they rupture an ovarian cyst. They're ovulating. And, and so the pediatrician and the pediatric surgeons and the emergency room doctors sometimes can't be certain that it's appendicitis. Uh, Perhaps the story, epigastric pain migrating to the right lower quadrant, isn't there. Perhaps the pain starts in the right lower quadrant. Perhaps there's no fever. Perhaps there's no elevated white blood cell count. In those situations where the story and the symptoms don't quite fit with appendicitis, we can get an abdominal CAT scan and look at the appendix and see if there are signs of inflammation or uh, signs of swelling in that area, and that may help us make a decision. The CAT scan isn't 100%, and also the CAT scan isn't completely benign. So we try to use common sense. If the predominance of the symptoms and the story and the history of the patient are consistent with appendicitis, we would just treat for appendicitis. If there's a significant question, then we would get a CAT scan, or sometimes we get a sonogram. The problem with the sonogram is it's much, much more difficult to interpret. And so it's only occasionally that we're able to tell for certain whether there's appendicitis with a, with a sonogram. Now, there are some situations where we don't operate on appendicitis. If there's somebody who's had a belly ache that's gone on for five or six days, what happens is the infection spreads outside of the appendix. You know, people use different words. It's interesting. They use different words to convey, to, to convey ideas. And the ideas that they use about appendicitis are very dramatic. We use words that have propulsive sounds, P's and B's. We say the appendix perforated, or we say it burst, or we say it ruptured. Well, the appendix doesn't explode inside a child's belly. What happens is it gets infected, and if it's not treated, if we don't give antibiotics, if we don't operate and take the appendix out, what happens is the infection spreads to the surrounding tissue, and you, get, you may get what's called a phlegmon, which is just inflamed intestine and tissue around the appendix, or you may even get an abscess, which is a collection of pus inside the belly around the appendix. Now, if a child has been sick for five or six days, and we know that the appendix is perforated, is that the infection has spread, doing an operation can be quite difficult. There's a lot of inflammation. It can be difficult to actually identify the appendix. And if you identify it, it may be difficult to separate it from the tissues around it, from the intestine around it, because the inflammation makes things stick together. So in patients who've been sick for a long time, we often give them IV fluids and antibiotics and hope that the antibiotics are strong enough to control the infection. That's, that kind of treatment works for perforated appendicitis about 90% of the time. And what we do is we then plan to do what's called an interval appendectomy. In other words, we give antibiotics and an interval appendectomy. In other words, we plan an appendectomy as an elective operation six to eight weeks later when the inflammation has gone down and we can do the operation quickly and safely. There are some now, I, I do want to point out, I said it works 90% of the time. That means that there are some children who, who have 
signs and symptoms of appendicitis. For various reasons, it isn't treated for the first five or six days. They come to the hospital, we give them antibiotics. If they don't respond, if they're in that 10% that don't respond, we then go ahead and operate. We, accepting the fact that there's some increased danger and increased difficulty for the surgeons, what we're trying to do is to control the infection and control the disease in the way that's safest, excuse me, that's safest and easiest for the patient. And so I would say that the vast majority of perforated appendices, appendices where the infection has spread, get treated with antibiotics and an interval appendectomy. Acute appendicitis, someone whose symptoms have started in the one or two days prior to coming to see us, we treat with antibiotics followed by an appendectomy during that